Zimbabwe has had a tumultuous relationship with its currency since the early 2000s. Today's guest is not just a minister, but a finance minister in the Second Republic of Zimbabwe, his first rodeo in the government of Zimbabwe, having been chief economist and vice president of the African Development Bank. When he came in, Zimbabweans had feelings and judgments, bearing in mind how sought after this office was and how important it is to our actual everyday lives. One of Professor Ngube's first orders of business for Zimbabweans was the implementation of the 2% tax on electronic transactions. Boy, did this make him unpopular. The High Court ruled against it, but the budget was an act of parliament. So years later, it is still standing and government boasts revenues of up to $80 million a month. Political commentators like Eddie Cross say it should actually go up to 5%. Now, every Zimbabwean is a taxpayer. Now this is how many functioning economies are flourishing. We were quite spoiled, to be honest, weren't we? Professor Ngube has been busy. Remember him flying out to Davos and us calling him two textbooks to understand us and our needs. Well, today we look not only at what he has done, but what the Second Republic has enabled him to do in his portfolio as our minister of our nation's finances and our country's economic development. Have you noticed the acceleration in road infrastructure development? Has the exchange rate been relatively consistent since the end of last year? Are there more local products on our shelves? In the midst of COVID-19 as a global pandemic and the natural disaster cyclone Idai, the results of all his efforts are still coming in. What we desire to know is how all of these launches, document strategies improve our daily lives. All right, so we're here with uh, Professor Mtuli Ngube. How are you? Very well, thank you. We, we last met in Malabo. Uh, in, we did, uh, in Equatorial Guinea. Equatorial Guinea. Uh -huh. This is like two years. It's been a long time. It's good to catch up again. Very good. Thank you for availing yourself. So um, congratulations on launching the NDS1 in 14 languages and Braille. Indeed. That's fancy. It's been a major project. We yeah. did it so quickly. Yeah. Now, finally, our policies are accessible to Good. everyone. You know? Good. So just to clarify the difference between TSP and NDS. Oh, the Transitional Stabilization Program, as the, as the name suggests, mm -hmm. Transitional Stabilization yes. Program. It was really to stabilize the economy. Yeah. yeah, to make sure that we were able to introduce our own currency, the Zimbabwe dollar, which we have done. Mm -hmm. Initially, it was volatile, but we managed to stabilize it. Okay. Secondly, we've also stabilized our growth uh, pattern. Uh, of course, we were hit by shocks mm -hmm. in the form of the cyclone, in the form of the, the, the pandemic, but we are sure now that growth is on a stable uh, uh, trajectory. So where is the stability, right? Because we as Zimbabweans have been through a lot, as you know. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about the day-to-day -day living of life and the cost of living um, and the cost of doing business, this is the stability you want to look at, to say, is it stable? If every day, is that the stability you speak of, or is there another level of stability that well, we need to understand? Let's look at where we were two years yeah. ago. Okay. Things were very unstable. Yeah. I think you'll agree with me. Yeah. The Zimbabwe dollar was all over the place. Yes. The power market was raging. Uh, but now that's all gone, yeah. in the sense that it's stable. If you look at the difference between the auction rate, our official rate, mm -hmm to the power rate, it's, it's, that has narrowed from like 300%, almost yeah. three times yeah. uh, difference to something much smaller, 20%, 30%, and that is manageable. Right. That is manageable. So things are stable. Secondly, where is the other stability? It's in the prices in the shops, mm -hmm. which technically in terms of economics we capture through infl inflation. Mm -hmm. Prices are now relatively stable. Look at where we were two years ago. Mm -hmm. Prices were very unstable. Right. And what they were, they were, they were um, responding to Rivanako was basically the, the exchange rate. The power rate was driving everything. So the moment the power rate stabilized, which it has, that all started reducing in inflation and reducing the rate at which prices change. Mm -hmm. That's how we measure stability. So, okay, this stability now, um, when we talk of the parallel rate, um, yes, to be fair, it has been somewhat consistent. Since end of last year, you won't find a big jump. But it's not about the price of uh, Zim dollars in the supermarkets. It's about the process it takes for us to be able to purchase these things in the supermarket. I earn an RTGS, let's right. assume. Right. I then change my money with my money changer at whatever rate is on the parallel market. Mm -hmm. And then I go buy in a supermarket mm -hmm. who's then indexing at a different rate. So I'm losing money almost three times 
for me to be able to purchase these goods that you're saying have been stable at one Zim dollar price. That doesn't work out. Oh, look at where we were before. Mm. Um, by stability, really, we mean the movement of prices in the shops okay. upwards in Zimbabwe dollar terms. Mm. So, so we've, we've, we've really improved on that. Prices are relatively stable in Zimbabwe dollar terms. And inflation, uh, you know, shops. At the shops of Venezuela, you are allowed to pay other than Zimbabwe dollars. The electronic version of that is RTGS, or to pay in US dollars. No one stops you from doing that. If you are around tripping between parallel market, Zim dollar, going back and forth, then you are playing another game of arbitrage and hoping to make a margin out of it. Why didn't you float the currency? Why the are you controlling the, the exchange rate? The currency is freely floating. The exchange rate is not controlled. Let me tell you what happens. At the moment, as mm -hmm. uh, you want to bid some foreign currency, you're into manufacturing. I hope you are. It's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Into manufacturing or whatever. So you qualify as someone who is in the productive sector. Right. Because that, that's always priority. Right. So you go to, to your bank and, and, and you ask your bank to bid on your behalf. At a, they also advise you at a certain rate, because maybe they feel that uh, that's the kind of rate, or you know what rate to, to bid at. So you can build at any rate that you want. So we do not control the currency. In fact, this is a freely floating exchange rate. We don't know how many people can get the, the rate you're saying at 1 is to 83, for example. Mm -hmm. Who qualifies for that? How are you selecting who gets put on that list? First of all, we have two windows. Right. There's a small to medium scale enterprises. Uh, they go through that uh, window. Anyone can apply through that, that window. There's if no you're problem. an SME? Yeah, SME. Yeah. Well, okay, how, how SME does SME go? I mean, oh, how small are we well, well, look, if you're looking for more than for 200,000, then you ought to go for the bigger window. So less than that. Okay. Uh, uh, you know. And then if you are, you are a large uh, a corporate or a, more, a bigger a business, yeah. then you go to the other window, which is what we started with. Yeah. And then the priority naturally is for those who are in the productive sector, the one to import essential raw material for manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And also we have allowed the fuel sector to also go sure. use that, that market as well. So, so those are the kind of, of, of uh, uh, companies that would qualify yeah. in that uh, in window for the large companies. Right. The, those are that, that are productive. In the so productive them, sector, so, so SMEs and then larger. Indeed, indeed. They, so we publish the average and say, you know, you know what, on average, mm -hmm. on average, this is the exchange rate that uh, Zimbabweans prefer today right, or today. trade it today. Okay. But in between auctions, mm -hmm. you are free to approach your bank and do your foreign currency transaction. Who owns the means of production in Zimbabwe? It's the private sector, mm -hmm. uh, largely. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a, a gov government also owns some, some companies. Mm -hmm but just largely the, the, the private sector. And, we, 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 and President Nangaka has been very clear. Yeah. We want to create a private sector-led economy. Yeah. We are supporting the, the, the private sector. Yeah. Let's go back to something we touched on earlier, which is this multi-currency economy, which um, we mm -hmm. do live in, you know, in reality, mm -hmm. where you've got the RTGS, you've got um, the, the US dollar, you've got the eco cash. You know, we've got all these um, different levels of currency. And that's what's really hurting people in terms of like how to operate, how to budget for the home, how to make business deals. And um, what, is, what are we going to do about this? Because this is going to continue to be an uneven playing field. Naturally, we are all as government concerned about the high level of charges, yes. the bank charges. Yes. $100 equivalent. Uh, at the end of the month, uh, I to be half. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, I'm, I'm dramatizing it. But the truth is, I've received these kind of, of yeah, complaints, yeah. And, and I agree. Even my younger, I can watch it. Uh, so, so we've said to the bank, uh, through a moral suasion, yeah. please try to reduce your charges. Yeah. It's very important. Yeah. And for those, whatever deposits, GABA put you an interest rate in their bank account, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I actually issued a statutory instrument last year right. to compel banks to pay a decent deposit interest rate. Some okay. of them have complied, mm -hmm. some of them have not complied, but the Reserve Bank is actually doing an audit. I've asked them to do an audit okay. uh, to check uh, uh, you know, who has complied, who hasn't, and those, those who have not complied you. should comply. We will tell you, you don't comply. even need to do an audit, it doesn't need to take that long. We will tell you, <laughs> as the users, as the end users. Uh, I think, in but <laughs> I, I, I don't know yeah. where anyway. Uh, you tell you yeah. tell me that's also very good. Yeah. It's additional information. Yeah. So that's the banks. What about the telcos, the MNOs? Oh yes, in, 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 charge are even higher than the banks. In the banks, are high. It, it is true. Again, <laughs> again, we've engaged them and say, mm. look, 
you are involved in the financial sector. Uh, these, these charges are very high for transacting. Please, can we work at reducing these charges? Again, it's moral suasion. Sure. We don't want to get to a stage where we have to dictate mm -hmm. what those bank charges or transaction charges yeah. should be. Yeah. Uh, then it becomes anti-business, mm -hmm. anti, anti Zimbabwe is open for business. Mm -hmm. We like to see competition, we like to see fair play. Uh, so we, we believe in that mantra. So are they complying? What's the agreement? You know, you say no, no, we, we, were, them, we, 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 we are in discussions. Is it gonna, is it gonna work out? Because mm -hmm. we, I, I've tried to remain hopeful, Reverend, yeah. that they eventually will, 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 uh, will converge. Also, you know what? There's we, really one player we're talking about. You know, when we talk of MNOs and the biggest. Um, you know, a mobile money transfer. Mm -hmm. It's really one. That oh, is well, the monopoly in the country at the moment. So what is the progress you've made with them? No, no, you know what? Mm -hmm. I don't want to speak about a specific uh, company. Okay. It's a policymaker and government. Okay. Everyone ranks pari pasu. Mm -hmm. Everyone is equal. Mm -hmm. I, I withdraw that mm -hmm. complicated word. Everyone is equal. We've treated fairly mm -hmm. and, and, and so forth. So I, I don't want to, to, to highlight any specific company. Yeah. But we are in conversations with the sector, the, yeah. the m and sector, the mobile banking sector, for them to lower their charges. And uh, in fact, they'll probably do even more business uh, uh, that way. We're yeah. all in this uh, together. I'm yeah. uh, sure there are many other ways, I think, to make money rather than to charge, uh, you know, to set such high uh, transaction charges for the public. Mm -hmm. yeah. Professor, let's talk about COVID, okay? Mm -hmm. um, we're still in this pandemic. We can't say the middle of it because we don't know when the end of it is. But um, we applaud the work you've done Thank you. to get us vaccinations in the country. Mm -hmm. um, just to clarify, some people think that all of these vaccines were donated. Uh, 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 basically, 400,000 doses were, were donated mm -hmm. uh, from, from, from China. Yeah. Uh, and then we have an, an additional uh, donation uh, from, from India, mm -hmm. uh, 75,000. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also a donation from, from Russia as well, a small amount, 20,000 20, or mm -hmm. so. Um, th these were donations, and this is a good thing. Sure. Yeah, it, it, we really appreciate it. Yeah. We have been so grateful been friends to these of friends yes, of Zimbabwe. No yeah. uh, we have seen it fit that yeah. they should support lives uh, and livelihoods sure. in Zimbabwe. Sure. But as a government, we set aside a hundred million US dollars equivalent, just over eight billion Zimbabwe dollars, right. to purchase vaccines ourselves. Right. We have the resources. Mm -hmm. We actually, I can confirm you look in the eye and say we have the resources because as Minister of Finance, I manage that account. We, we've actually bought, there's a consignment that arrived yesterday, I'm sure you are aware, yes, of one, uh, one, uh, one million and fifty six thousand yes. doses yes. from China. Yes. We bought it. Yes. We paid for it. Yes. There was also a consignment mm -hmm. that arrived. I did hear the word procure in the news bulletin and I said I'll ask Professor tomorrow when we sit down. Uh, I think let's say yes. bought. bought. You know, we procure is a complicated. It so is. we bought <laughs> yes. uh, vaccines. Yes. Yeah. And also the consignment that arrived uh, two weeks ago, we also bought those vaccines mm -hmm. as well. So from now on, we are buying more. Okay. In fact, our target is that every month, uh, end of April, end of May, end of June, a million doses Must arrive. will be arriving and they'll be paid for. Right. Absolutely. And we have the budget for that. We have the budget Maria for Murkuti, that. I know it's there because I'm managing this account. Absolutely. 100 million US dollars. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Pane re allowance ye jimwewo fanika ma salary e ma nurses ma salary e ma teachers muruku jifambisa se ipapo ne ma PPEs is that all part of that budget? No. The, 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 the vaccine acquisition mm -hmm. budget is separate. Pane okay. omwe that is dealing with the the frontline employees How deep in terms is of that omwe is it deep? Okay. It's uh, sufficiently deep. Sufficiently. Why zinuzaga mm ronge -hmm. ka? Okay. We are managing of the financial affairs very well, trust me. Right. So let me tell you about what happened last year. Mm -hmm. Last year, basically on the COVID response alone, COVID response, which is a, a, a part of the health sector mm -hmm. expenditure, mm -hmm. we spent 25 billion mm -hmm. Zimbabwe dollars, 25 billion. Mm -hmm. uh, out of that 25 billion, 19 billion was spent on the salaries. Oh yeah, those allowances are not cheap, they're expensive, but we have to pay them because that's how you respond. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That's what we spend. Yeah, we've spent a so lot. So the allowances were these for healthcare workers only? He no, healthcare workers. Every, the, that entire COVID-19 allowance in the entire civil service, mm, mm. that's what it, it, it cost us. Ko, uh, absolutely. Ko, ko ma, 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 ma relief package, 
You mean the cash transfers? Yes. We, again, yes, that, that is all within the budget. If you recall from the beginning, mm -hmm. we were paying people like $300. Yeah. But was what we're paying now is 1500 Professor, if you, God forbid, touch wood, mm -hmm. uh, got COVID, mm -hmm. um, are you going to go and uh, say, I want to be admitted at Harare Hospital? Or are you going to look for a private facility? No, you know what? I don't want to pick a specific hospital. Yeah. What you're really raising is critically important, which mm. is let us as a country upgrade our, our health, public, our public, public health sector facilities. Yes. Frankly, in, in the last uh, 18 months in response to COVID, we've really tried. Mm. Yeah, if you look but at the Wilkins. Is not yet there. Let me explain. Yes. Wilkins Hospital, right. uh, uh, UBH, and, and I can keep going. We couldn't do everything, frankly. We sure. couldn't do and anything. And at once. And, and at once. Yeah, yeah, and at once. So we are really, really trying, and we, we, we put your finger on it. Equipment, the quality of our health sector facilities in yeah. the public sector, we ought to upgrade that. We are working on that as I speak. People have criticized you for um, not giving the health sector or the health ministry enough in terms mm -hmm. of budget allocation. Mm -hmm. um, and do you feel that after this pandemic, you might admittedly say for sure, we need to make sure that we're prepared for these things before any kind of disaster. Are you going to be a bit more lenient uh, with the budget? Yeah. As Treasury and as wow. Minister of Finance, mm. I've been always been very lenient and very supportive of the, of the health sector. Mm. Let me explain. Mm. The, the, the Abuja target for health sector support is mm. that the health sector should be about, what, 15% in terms of allocation, 15% mm -hmm. of the total budget. Before we knew about the pandemic, we, had, we allocated 12% right, already. Right. So we're way up then closer to the target. Mm. During the pandemic, I've already spoken about uh, the, the, the 25 billion that we spent on, on, on focusing on COVID alone. And this is excluding other health issues, mm -hmm. TB, malaria. Sure. Da, 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 da. If you yeah. add all of those together as a percentage of the total budget, we're closer to 20%, way above the Abuja target. So that's what is not obvious to most people. No, it's not. Yeah. yeah. So I'm explaining to you here loud sure, and clear sure. today, <laughs> we have really made great effort in supporting okay. the health sector. We'll okay. continue to do so. And, and now that we've gone above the Abuja target, yeah. we want to keep it right there. Okay. Yeah. Now let's move to um, our day-to-day -day living, right? We did touch a little bit about cost of living. Mm -hmm. The ZIMVAC report, right. which I read, right, mm -hmm. yesterday, mm -hmm. talks about 2.4 million Zimbabweans living in abject poverty. Mm -hmm. We look at how um, our economy has been described and people will say there has been over 90% unemployment in Zimbabwe. For mm -hmm. years, that has been what has been said. Then recently, the World Bank released statistics saying that there is 4% unemployment in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. How much unemployment is there in Zimbabwe? We let, me let, 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 let me start. Oh, that's the figure. 4%? Yeah. Yes, that's the figure. I'll come, I'll come to it. Let me start with the Zimbabwe report. Yes. The same report actually commends government for the good work it does mm -hmm. to support the vulnerable groups mm -hmm. right across our communities, right across, across the country. All the Zimvac report is saying is that there is extreme poor poverty. Please deal with it. Government and your partners, deal with it. Mm -hmm. And we're dealing with, with, with it. So, oh yes, through cash transfers that we have, we have increased from you know, $300 to, to 1,500. Okay. Through uh, giving people food, right? we've been distributing food, we have, in terms of the BIM program, where we are supporting families that cannot, or children that cannot afford, whose parents cannot afford school fees. Are you we're, paying fees? Yes, we are paying fees. Ups, and we have, been, we have increased that, that amount. That amount. And then also, don't discount from Vuda mm -hmm. in Tosa. Don't discount it. It is also a social protection response agenda. So you are giving yeah. people inputs. Yes. Fertilizer, seed, mbeu, and wozgara. Mm -hmm. And then we've also uh, taught them to, uh, this is on how to do it. Mm -hmm. Number of holes that you dig, yeah. how you, yeah. you, know, you nurture the field and yeah. so forth and so forth. Yeah. And they're not paying for that. Mm -hmm. That's a donation from the government to the yeah. people. Why? We want to support the people. Mm -hmm. So if you add all of that, we're doing a lot mm -hmm. of what, in response to what the Zimvac report is raising. Mm -hmm. And in fact, in that report, they appreciate government's effort, okay. but also the effort of the partners. Let me come to the unemployment. Yes. Uh, Implementation. 90, suddenly 4%. Yeah, yeah. You know what? It, it's very, yeah. 4%. No, no, no. It just yeah. means that unemployment is being 
mismeasured. Right? Yes, mismeasured. This is what we need you to carry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there are a lot of Zimbabweans who are self-employed. Mm -hmm. They are SMEs, they are running uh, enterprises from, you know, uh, of the small offices, uh, from their homes, uh, in the streets. They are employed. Mm -hmm. We think of employment as being sitting behind a, a desk in a large, large company. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily. You know? uh, sometimes we always uh, uh, say that if you, if you, if you, you know, go to any uh, intersection and say, ah, how many people want a job here? You may find that there are very few techers, in fact. Why? They are gainfully employed elsewhere because they are, they are self-employed. So self-employment is employment. employment. In the last budget, which, no, no, this budget, 2021, I introduced a measure where we said we need now a location tax. So if you're an SME operating in under some address and you're renting space from some landlord, we are designate, designating your landlord as a tax collector on behalf of government and they will collect from you because we don't know who you are, but they know. You understand? So, so we've done a lot to get the SMEs onto the tax uh, net. And that's critically important for us to grow our, our, our economy. But also recognize that they're an important part of the economy. And they don't have registered companies, though. They're not registered. They're just ju 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 Just think of the last tax yeah. which I talked about, yeah. which is linked to your location. You might not that's be registered. Sufficient. So you're OK with that one for yes, now? Yes, because the, the collector is someone, the, the collecting agent, who is the landlord, owns that land. Yeah. There's a title deed. It says they are the owner. So they are registered. That's all I need to but care But not about. everyone has a landlord. Not everyone's operating under that structure. <laughs> if, look, someone has gone to escape. Yeah. Lucky them, you know. Yeah. Surely I don't want to take someone who's operating under a street light. Really. Let's leave that person alone. If you were to speak to investors right now, mm -hmm. you tweeted the other day about Zimbabwe is open. All yes. right? Being yes. very open. Absolutely. All right? Um, and I want you to, to just justify this, you know, and help us understand because four years since uh, 2017 it's been Zimbabwe is open for business. Mm -hmm. We've seen it. Mm -hmm. There have been headlines of mega deals. Um, there has been so much going on. I would get into asking you which mega deal has changed our economy, but let's wait on that. But tell us what you would say to investors now, three years on. Um, for those that didn't read your piece, for example, you know, mm -hmm. about Zim being open. Yeah. Just unpack that for us. How open and what does that mean? For a start, we've improved on our rankings in terms of the environment for doing business. The results are there to, to, to speak, to speak for, 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 for this uh, success. Number two, let's look at the deals that have come through in the mining sector, the bigger deals in the mining sector. Mm -hmm. That is proof that Zimbabwe is open for business. Right. Uh, uh, of late, we've launched a a whole stock exchange in hard currency in Victoria, Victoria Falls. Yeah. That again speaks to Zimbabwe is open for, for business. And it's proof to them as well that we are open for business and we're here to support them. Mm. Now, there's a big word, the C word, okay? Corruption. Mm -hmm. um, and I put, I'll put it next to another word, which is consistency. What attracts a lot of investors is consistency in policy, consistency in how we do our business. So you talk about this now and there is growth, as you said, from 2017. So the idea is that hopefully it will be consistent enough to attract. Mm -hmm. But then there's corruption, okay, mm -hmm. which um, lingers in some areas, right? We can point them out, but I think we don't need to because we know that it exists in our systems in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. This is going to be an impediment, right? How are we going to work around this as a crippling element for our economy's progress? Well, there have been cases already where people have been caught, you know, and, 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 and they're being prosecuted mm. and, and all that. Are those so, prosecutions so, mm -hmm. bringing back anything? Are they bringing back money? Oh, are they oh bringing yes. back resources? Are no, they oh, oh, yes, yeah. you know, significant enough to say, you know what, this is working and we're getting somewhere? Mm. Oh, oh, yes. I mean, uh, Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption uh, Commission has told us that they've managed to, to collect some, yeah. some, some resources from yeah. those who have you know, uh, found they've been corrupt and, mm. and are judged to be so and, and convicted. Mm. So, so something is, is happening. Mm. But I think it's really more about the deterrent, uh, 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 deterrence of it all, that yeah. if you know someone can be prosecuted, whether we recover something or not, then you will be deterred yourself from going down that, that path. So that message needs to be sent and sent strongly, yeah. and that's what that's what is happening. I think that uh, the public should give us and the world should give us a lot more credit in our uh, dealing with corruption the way we've we've done it. Really, that that is currently the case. We are making a great effort, yeah. and we as treasury, as government, stand, always stand ready to support uh, as anti-corruption, the police. We're doing a lot. 
They were buying currently vehicles for the police, so they're more mobile yeah. and, and, and so forth. So we're doing our best to support them. Um, you speak a lot about, um, you know, the loan repayments. What is your plan, right? Mm -hmm. um, there, there was Lima even as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've not heard you speak so much about it. But what is your strategy regards our debt? Oh, you know what? In the last two years, we have been seized with the, the drought, the cyclone, and COVID. Yeah. That was the wrong time for me to push for any debt repayments. I could only talk, talk about debt restructuring, you, you know? I couldn't, what, because what, was more, what has been more urgent is saving lives, make sure the Zimbabweans are fed. By the way, as of today, uh, uh, we have begun uh, doing our payments, token payments, to the World Bank, to the African Development Bank, European Investment Bank, and so forth. Mm -hmm. As of today, we've resumed. Really? So we, are, oh yes, we are paying. Mm -hmm. We are paying. Yeah. We, we are not uh, bad debtors, you know. Mm -hmm. we, yeah. we like to yeah. honor our debt. So, so we, we started paying. But a, a, a broader resolution, as we've just discussed, is necessary, and you will see us uh, uh, engage our credit partners in this direction. All right, well, we'll be watching. And in closing, um, around our um, transactional monies, right, that we touch and feel, uh -huh. denominations, okay? Mm -hmm. If it costs about 100 bond to get on a combi. First of all, Zimbabwe dollar, not bond. Sorry, Zimbabwe dollar. Okay, <laughs> correct. I, I'm right? waving my finger there. Correct. <laughs> Which I was trying to stress Zimbabwe the point. Zimbabwe dollars, all right? Mm -hmm. If it costs 100 Zimbabwe dollars mm -hmm. to ride a combi, okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. why are we faffing around, so to speak, with $2 notes, $5 notes. What is your plan for that? No, no, look, in, in any currency, you mm. need small de denomination notes. Uh, $2. That's what we have. When one of the cheapest things is $100. Well, there, there, are, some, there are some countries where, you know, where I've seen a, a yeah. what is it, is it 25 cents or a, a quarter? I, I won't even mention the countries. Mm -hmm. but, but, but secondly, those who are refusing these notes, but mm -hmm. demo and it it's illegal. It's illegal. It's illegal to refuse Zimbabwe cars. Please, if you catch anyone <laughs> refusing yeah. to accept Zimbabwe cars, report them to the police. You We're see, though, what the critics have said about that. People then who don't understand it so well will say they're printing more money. Ah, no. Wasadero. Mm. When we issued all those $50 bonds, we request the banks, we do a tipe. RTGS. Mm -hmm. So we swap cash for RTGS. Mm -hmm. Because we don't also want to increase money supply. Because really the issue about oh they are printing money is about excessive growth in money You're supply. Right, 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 right. In money supply, you got queer, you know, quiza mitongo mitengo guma supermarket, mm -hmm. which is inflation. Mm -hmm. We want to control that. So we swap RTGS with the cash. Right. That's how we're going to manage it. Manage it, but that's how we've managed it all along. Mm. That's exactly what we've done all along. Yeah. Professor Mube is on record to have said, "We lifted the lid off the boiling pot." Some will argue, "To chirpukwata," but lapes vela kona, uga chana, kodwa lapes ya kona, segu seduze.